Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Drug and Alcohol Attorneys video newsletter. Just recently I've been getting a lot of calls from people asking if we could assist with the Baker Act and when we get into the nitty gritty what they're really trying to do is to get somebody into treatment uh, at which point I, I usually tell them that a Marchman Act or a guardianship is more appropriate. So I thought in this video what I would do is uh, compare the Baker Act to a Marchman Act and a guardianship and I've I've got some sort of inanimate objects that I think will really help you to understand how this all works. So um, I've talked about the Baker Act in a number of other videos but the Baker Act is just like this pen it's 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 very narrow it's a very uh, small application and it's a 72 hour hold up to 72 hours for emergency stabilization only it is not a treatment statute and I've put out a lot of videos about the good, bad, and the ugly of uh, of the Baker Act, but it is intended, intended, not always used, but it's intended only as a 72-hour um, max emergency stabilization. It is not a treatment statute. So that is the Baker Act. This 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 mug, well, this mug represents the Marchman Act. So as you can see, it's a little 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 wider, little broader in its application than uh, the, the Baker Act. So the Marchman Act is, um, is, is, is Florida Statute 397, the Baker is 394, and the, and the Marchman Act is intended as uh, a, an involuntary commitment statute for both substance use and mental illness. Okay, so it's, as a general rule, it's, it's not designed for uh, emergency stabilization. It can be used that way, and sometimes we do use it that way, but it is designed to get somebody into treatment. In other words, it's a treatment statute, unlike, unlike, unlike the Baker Act, okay? So the Marchman Act allows for a period of treatment for up to, up to 90 days, okay, which can get repeated. So that is a primary substance use involuntary commitment statute, treatment statute for people with substance use. This bowl, this bowl over here, this is guardianship, okay? And as you can see, it's the broadest, it's the biggest of these inanimate objects that I have. The guardianship statute is a statute um, that basically gives a guardian, which could, could be the parent, it could be a professional, but it gives the, the guardian the ability to make decisions for somebody else um, who cannot make decisions for themselves. In other words, they lack capacity to make what you and I would consider to be rationally objective reasonable decisions and so typically this starts off as um, an emergency temporary guardianship which is good for up to 90 days okay and during that time an examining committee three experts is making a determination as to whether or not the guardianship can be you know expanded beyond 90 days so in theory somebody could lack capacity for a significant period of time okay so if you're familiar with the Britney Spears case her parents have had you know, the California equivalent of guardianship over her for, I think, 10 or 11 years now. And, and, and in addition to enabling the guardian to have the ability to make uh, medical decisions, you know, like you will go to treatment, um, it gives them the ability to um, mandate medication because sometimes somebody is, is, is unstable, lacks capacity because they just refuse to take their medication. So it would give the guardian the ability to make that decision. It also gives the guardian uh, control over finances. If there's money that's being you know, either um, used to, to, to finance a habit or is, you know, being, you know, taken from, you know, a family, um, as a, you know, from a family asset. Um, so things of that nature. So as you can see, it's, it's a whole lot broader in application. Okay, but I want to be really clear because, you know, you know I've, I've talked a lot about Baker Act. This is not a treatment statute. And if you try and use it as such, um, you're going to find that at some point the state potentially could step in and just push the family aside and decide they're going to make decisions for your loved one. And the state typically does that when the family doesn't initiate either a Marchman Act or a guardianship. And the state just steps in and says, look, you know, uh, you've had enough time to make the decision for your loved one. You've had enough time to make, you know, to, to save them. You know what? We're going to do it for you. Step aside. We're going to take control of the situation. And then we have all kinds of other issues that, that arise from, from the Bay Act. So I, I hope that hope you know that helps to, to clarify some things. Um, as you know, we give a free consultation. Happy to talk to you about Baker Act, Marchman Act, or guardianship. Just reach out to us. And thanks once again for uh, for tuning in. Take care. Bye bye.